Okay, here we have a compartmental analysis problem. So we have a well-formulated transdermal patch delivering a drug into the bloodstream at a constant rate. From the bloodstream, it's metabolized by the liver in a first-order reaction. What might a compartmental model look like for this drug? Well, a compartmental model just means those box models where you have drug going from one compartment to another. Maybe you could draw that as the patch and it leaves a zero order reaction to the bloodstream. Bloodstream. We can call that X in these one compartment models. And we can say that the drug leaves when it's metabolized because it's no longer the same drug. And the difference between this first arrow and the second arrow is that the first arrow represents a zero order reaction. And that means that the rate of the reaction is always constant represented by k with a zero. Whereas this red one is a first order reaction. First order reaction. And you would represent that with k. So k is always constant, but the whole overall reaction would be represented by k times x, where x is whatever is in the compartment. So that's what a compartmental model looks like for this drug. What is the mass balance around the bloodstream? So mass balance is just when you talk about the rate of the mass change. So it would be the rate equal to in minus out. So we can represent that as dx over dt, which is the change in x, the bloodstream, with respect to the change in time. That's equal to the in minus the out. So in, going into the bloodstream, we have k0. And going out, we have k. And remember, we have k times x. So you'd always multiply these rate constants when they're first order by the box that they come from. Now we want to solve the mass balance around the bloodstream in terms of time t. So to do that, you want to do a Laplace transform. So the steps of a Laplace transform would be to step one, transform. So we start with dx dt equal to k0 minus kx. So if you look at our chart, this dx dt turn into s x bar minus x naught, which is the initial amount in x. That's equal to k0 minus kx is not on the chart, but we can break this apart into two individual pieces. k0 is just a constant, and a constant would transform into a constant over s. Negative kx is actually just a constant times x which transforms into a constant times x bar. Step two, you want to rearrange using algebra, which is the whole point of using the Laplace transform instead of doing calculus. So now we have x bars on both sides, and our end goal is that we want x bar on one side and everything else on the other side. So we can add k x bar over to one side. We get s x bar plus k x bar. We can move x naught over to the other side. k zero over s plus x naught. Step three is simplify. So we can factor the x bar out. We get s plus k. And we can recognize that x naught, in many cases, is 0, just like this one. And that's because the drug is all in the patch to start with. They're saying that none of it is in the blood because they're just starting this patch. The initial concentration, or the initial amount in the bloodstream, is 0. So this gives us simply k0 over s on the right side. And we might as well move this s plus k to the denominator by dividing both sides. We get x bar equals 
k0 over s times s plus k. And step four, now that we have x bar isolated, we can reverse transform. So the reason that we get x bar on one side is to turn it back into x using the chart. Just go from right to left this time. And this right side, it, you might have to dig around, but you can recognize that you set k0 to be capital A, you get k to be lowercase a, and these are all just constants, right? Rate constants. Then you can find the formula that's a over s times s plus a. This then gives you, you convert it back, you get capital A over lowercase a times 1 minus e to the negative kt. And that's your reverse transform solved. And now, what would this graph actually look like? We have e to the negative kt on this side. You can imagine a graph like e to the negative x, where it would cross the y-axis at 1. It would look something like this, and downwards. Well, if we have the opposite of that, the negative, we're doing 1 minus that. Then we mark our 1, and instead of having a graph that looks like this, we would have a graph that looks like this. We would approach this line as time tends to infinity. But don't forget about this k0 over k over here. So when we're dealing with amounts, the amount approaches k0 over k. And so if we were to convert all of these measurements to concentrations, we would get something useful for determining the steady state concentration, where as you fill drug into the bloodstream, as time goes on, you increase and increase and increase your infusion, you're actually increasing your first order excretion or metabolism also, which causes this asymptote, because the pressure of the excretion is causing this to tend towards an asymptote. And so this kind of thinking will be useful in the future chapters.